today on Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Dreamboat owner Al Cowan travels to MCU to see his fully renovated 23-foot Dorado for the first time. When he saw this boat completely finished with a different T-top, different color hull, it just looked like a new boat. I think he was like not really believing it was the same boat. Florida Sportsman Boating Editor George Labonte meets with Dreamboat owner Alex Dulski, who restored a classic 22-foot aqua sport with fishing with his family in mind. This project worked out really great for Alex. The way the boat turned out was exactly as he planned. He's got a boat he can pass on to his son when he gets old enough to have a boat. It was a win-win for both of them. And the rigging crew at MCU installs a unique set of trim tabs on Brian's 30-foot Grady White project. You know, you can have a bunch of people run to one side of the boat, and this sucker is going to automatically level the boat out. You know, and that's a good thing. It keeps the pilot with its eyes where they should be in front of them, not pushing a bunch of buttons. All coming up on Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. So I had Al Cowan give me a call on the 23 Dorado. He told me he was ready to head over from the west coast of Florida to pick up his boat. So when Al brought that 23 Dorado in, it had some really bad faded gel coat. It had a dual station top that didn't have a lot of sun coverage. The hatches on the inside were all broken where the hinges mount. The inside deck area, the non-skid was none to speak of. So now after its transformation here at MCU, the boat's looking incredible. We put a whole wrap on the side of the hull. We repainted all the decks. We actually went with a two-tone non-skid with all grip paint. We got rid of that dual station tower. We added that big bird's all top. The thing has tons of shade. This thing really came together nice. I had Robbie go out, get the boat prepped and ready. This boat went through many stages of all different types of work. I wanted to make sure it was completely detailed, cleaned up, and ready for delivery day. So when I brought Al out back to take a look at the boat, I think it was a little bit of awe shock at first. When he saw this boat, completely finished with a different T-top, different color hull, it just looked like a new boat. I think he was like not really believing it was the same boat. As soon as I saw the rub rail with the stainless steel insert and the lines uh, just looking very classic and, and the color scheme is gonna, is gonna stand the test of time, we won't, it, it'll, it'll last another 20 years. So I think that was the first thing that jumped out is we accomplished our goal of keeping a very classic boat and making it more classic. We walked up to the boat. Al took a look at the inside. I think the first thing that caught his eye was that two-tone upholstery Vic did. It came out incredible. I knew it took his breath away. It's a very attractive two-tone diamond pattern, ivory and sand combination that uh, just makes all of the inside and the interior of the boat look new, pop, have a classic feel and lasting color that is just a classic look. Al helped his wife jump up in there. The first thing they were drawn to was the dash panel. That custom plexiglass dash came out awesome. The way Dave bent it and formed it to the console, this was totally customized to this boat and this boat only. I think when Al was staring at that, he realized it. This boat looks better than a new boat. You can always tell a, a good job when you kind of open things up and open the hood up. And from where we were to where we are now, when we lift the center console and you get into the guts of the boat, now it's laid out so not only is it much more easy to maintain, everything's new, everything's labeled, all properly wired, and should last years into the future. So after popping that console open and Al sticking his head inside, he was completely satisfied. I think in his head, he totally felt it was money well spent. Another major item I wanted Al to use on this boat was a cutting table. I called my buddies at Boat Outfitters. They make these really awesome tables. They're on a gimbal mount. They drop in the rod holder. It's real functional. This boat just got repainted. I did a lot of gel coat work. We made this boat look new again. He didn't want to be chopping up and cutting things on his brand new deck. So after checking all this cool stuff out, Al and his wife couldn't wait to get down to the water. They told me they were ready to hook it up and take it down to the boat ramp. 
I was all about it. It's time to go for a sea trial. We're actually cruising through the pocket. It's time to hit the intercoastal and throw some throttle to this thing. This boat took off and actually Al was impressed with the performance. Eliminating that second station tower, it actually performed a little better. Having the ability to look at the trim tab switch and seeing the indicators, knowing where the tabs were, it was much easier for him. It made the boat a lot more functional and a lot more user friendly. The, the trim tabs are ultra responsive. Uh, I'm gonna take some getting used to because I, you know, they're, they're so much uh, more responsive than the old ones and these are gonna work great. So after running up the intercoastal for a bit, Al was all about checking out this new power pole that we installed. The wind was ripping, the current was running, and it was kind of deep. I wasn't sure that we were actually gonna actually stick in our spot. We hit the pole, it dropped down, the boat was stuck. It wasn't going anywhere. He couldn't believe he had gone all these years without one. It's, it's just not having to worry about a back anchor, pushing a button, and, and, and being able to control your position. Uh, that's just going to be a huge bonus, one that I can't believe that I've taken this long to actually put on my boat. So. We were actually running a boat up the intercoastal waterway. I was watching my daughter sit there with Al's wife, sitting on a nice soft cushion, enjoying a ride. It actually made me realize that that was a really neat feature about this boat that I wasn't expecting to be so functional, but after watching them use it, I could see how that serves a major purpose of this style boat. Not only were the girls enjoying shade underneath that nice Dodger Vic built, but underneath that Bird's All Tea Top, I noticed the fact that we were in the shade the whole time we were out on the boat. And on those hot summer days, it's nice to be able to get on a tea top and not have the sun beating on you all day. So now this is just gonna be much more practical. Trailering the boat now is not a big deal. Um, a lot easier and the boat does perform better uh, and has a lot more shade. Now I've got a boat that I've had for 20 years and now I'm gonna have that boat for another 20 years and my grandkids will be able to play around in that boat and uh, I'll be there with them. So that's what's cool about it. So we were able to stay within budget with implementing all of Al's needs and her feeling of having a new boat. Mission accomplished. This thing's complete, they're on their way home, I'm getting paid. This is what I like. When we return, Brian and the rigging crew at MCU install custom storage boxes in the 28-foot carry project. This segment brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. At Yamaha, reliability is a family tradition. Meet the next generation. Four new advanced technology-inspired inline four-cylinder performers. Bred from the reliability and boater satisfaction that is part of Yamaha's DNA, they prove that when power gets lighter, faster, stronger, and smarter, boating gets even better and more satisfying for boaters like you. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Join us as Brian and the rigging crew at MCU install custom ordered storage boxes in the 28 foot carry project. If you guys remember, we had a 28 carry here in the shop that we had to re rig after we painted the inside of the boat. Steve got the bracket on with the deployable ladder out of the side. The thing looks awesome. It's time to start wiring the boat. So, as Steve got into the plumbing on the boat, he told me he ran into a problem with hooking up the vent lines and the fuel fills. Outside of the hull, you've got to attach where your fuel vent goes, and then on the inside of the hull, there's a liner wall. There's actually no access. Typically, you're just gonna cut a little hole, you're gonna put a pie access plate so you can open it and close it, and you have ingress and egress to the inside of the hull of the boat. The customer requested no pie access plates. So I came up with a cool idea to make a more functional access to the side of the boat, and actually make it look like it wasn't something that was an afterthought, and we just cut a hole in the side of the boat. Boat Outfitters has a really cool tilt-out tray box that they designed that works perfectly for this type of situation because it's so shallow. The door actually tilts out and it has a box attached to the back of the door and it only allows it to open so far, but when you close it, you can actually order these boxes to whatever depth you want. So if you've only got two inches of room, you get a two inch storage box. If you've got four inches of room, you can get a four inch storage box. I really like this feature, especially in a midship part of the boat like this. He'll be able to keep his spring lines right inside this box. He doesn't have a lot of room, so it's gonna be a narrow box, but enough to carry some rope or some light tackle. It's gonna look like it was thought of and meant to be there from day one. 
After seeing these boxes installed in the 28 carry, I'm really glad that the customer decided he didn't want a pie access plate there. It made me think about it a little more. Coming up with that idea to put those tilt out boxes, the things look incredible. Not only that, they serve a major function and purpose. The guys at Boat Outfitters really helped me out. My plastic shop has been crazy as can be. I would have taken a, probably a day to build those things. Once all I had to do was pick up the phone, place an order, design the depth I wanted in the box, and the thing showed up to my shop a couple days later. I was able to finish up all my other projects and then install these boxes. Everything flowed perfectly, and the process was simple and easy. When we return, FS Boating editor George Labonte joins Dreamboat owner Alex Dulski aboard his Aquasport family fisherman in this week's One Man's Dreamboat segment. This segment brought to you by Surehold, clean and simple. The ultimate bucket list. Let's start with an ergonomic corrosion-free rope handle. Check. You want a caddy to organize your supplies and lift them out with ease. Check. Add in a bucket grate to elevate wash tools out of dirty water. Check. While you're at it, let's include integrated soap measuring cups. Check. How about a base that won't let your bucket scratch, tip, or slip? Check. Top it off with a secure lid that doubles as a place to sit down. Check and check. The Surehold One Bucket System. For everything on your bucket list, visit OneBucket.com. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Join us for this week's One Man's Dreamboat segment with Florida Sportsman Boating Editor George Labonte as we feature anglers who have already launched their dream. Florida Sportsman began these features 30 years ago and the dreams just keep getting better. Today we meet up with Alex Delsky and his son Sam. Alex had a 22-foot aquasport when he was in college. He enjoyed fishing on the Space Coast offshore in this boat for years sold that boat. Fast forward several years later, Alex is married with a son. He decided it was time to build a boat he could take his son fishing on. He found a 1978 boat just like the one he had in college. We're going to have a look at it today. Well guys, it's a beautiful day here in Jupiter, Florida. Here with Alex Delsky and young Sam. Sam, you ready to go catch a fish? Oh yeah. Well, this boat is a 1978 Aquasport 22 family fisherman. Got a kind of an interesting backstory here. Alex, why don't you tell me a little bit about how you ended up with this boat? It's kind of neat. So in college, I had the exact same boat. I uh, had an 82 model. And um, I was up in school in Orlando, and we fished out of Port Canaveral. And we would actually take the boat, if anybody's ever fished out of Port Canaveral, it's a ways to go <laughs> offshore definitely fishing definitely a ways to go. And the boat ran great, and I loved the boat. And I ended up keeping the boat for a couple years in college and selling it afterwards. And then. Ten years ago, this guy was born, and when he was two, I found this boat. I wanted something to take him out on, and I wanted something he, he could both eventually grow into and use. Sure. So this boat worked out perfect for that. It was absolutely. absolutely perfect. Alex and his son love to do a bunch of different kinds of fishing. On this day, we decided we would go snapper fish. There's a lot of action for a young kid. It's a perfect day to give it a try. We set out and try and catch a couple snappers. While we were fishing, the wind picked up, got a little bit sporty for us, so we decided to head in Jupiter Inlet, pull up underneath the shadow of the Jupiter Lighthouse. I'd have a chance to talk to Alex a little bit about the build. All right, so you've obviously done a lot of work to this boat. You know, there's a lot of these old ones around, but most of them are in pretty rough shape. I mean, tell me a little bit about what you were up against when you started this build here. That's exactly how it was. This one was pretty rough, which is exactly what I wanted because I wanted something that I could make my own. Structurally, the boat was good. The transom was perfect. I was lucky it didn't have any rot. From 78, you would think that Absolutely. it would have some rot. It didn't. It was great, so I was I lucked out there. The fuel tank was shot. Built a brand new fuel tank that was patterned exactly. It was an 86-gallon tank. It went back in. Um, where the cooler is now, that is now the seat, there, the old seat that was there had made a soft spot in the deck. That was the only big soft spot we really had to fix. Yep. And above that, and where the pedestal seat was, um, I had to fix that. Other than that, the deck, the stringers, everything else was fantastic. Even the cabin was great. You got lucky. I got very, very lucky. The finish work looks really nice on the boat. Actually, the paint job looks really nice. I mean, it's a cool color. Did you all grip the whole boat? I did. I started with 545 and then painted the whole boat, and then we used the all grip non skid beads and texture on the floor. Now, beyond outside cosmetics, I mean, there were some other mechanical things that you had to do to the boat, too, obviously. I mean, little bits and pieces. What else have you got going on here? Um, I added modern day electronics, GPS, depth finder, stuff like that. Um, I added a fuel flow gauge. Uh, 
I added a battery charger so when the boat's sitting at dock or on, on the trailer, I can plug in because I had two house batteries and a starting battery. So it's always nice to keep them fully charged. You probably had to rewire the boat too. There was not a, an ounce of copper in this boat when I started. I completely pulled everything out and started from scratch. You know what, tell me about this seat here. That's a original brink box kind of helm pod thing, right? That's correct. That was the original seat slash cool, cooler at the time. I tried very hard to find a matching one to do on the other side like there was, but it's very difficult to find one. So ultimately, um, it was my gain to find a 250 quart cooler. It's tons of storage, it's fish storage, it's ice and drink storage, and it's a really functional seat. Yeah, so it makes a great seat. Alex, tell me some of the advantages of this layout. I mean, you know, you see a lot of center consoles obviously around, but there's really a lot to gain from this kind of forward style family fisherman setup. Why do you like it so much? So out here, trolling is really a big part of the fishing that we do and I have outriggers for the boat and this huge cockpit on a 22 foot boat it is huge when we're talking 22 feet it is big yeah, everybody absolutely. can come back here and fish fight fish and do everything you need to and bottom fishing as well there's plenty of room for people to be you know anchored next to each other and on the gunnels here and bottom fishing with with plenty of room and not bumping into each other well you did a great job with the boat Alex I'm really happy you took the time to spend with us today and thanks for coming to see it. Can I get it. a rain check on a not so windy day? Absolutely. Sounds good. Great. Thanks, buddy. Thank you, Sam. This project worked out really great for Alex. The way the boat turned out was exactly as he planned. He's got a boat he can pass on to his son when he gets old enough to have a boat. It was a win-win for both of them. With an initial purchase price of $2,500, and after spending $17,000 in repairs and custom modifications, the cost of Alex's dream boat comes to a total of $19,500. When we come back, the crew at MCU installs a special set of trim tabs on a 30-foot Grady White. This segment brought to you by Boat Outfitters, trusted manufacturer of quality marine products. Luck happens when preparation meets opportunity. As a supplier of over 200 leading boat builders, at Boat Outfitters we understand what it takes to have a successful day on the water. That's why we offer hundreds of tackle storage systems and the ability to design custom tackle centers to your specifications. From plier and leader holders to custom tackle boxes and fillet tables, Boat Outfitters has what you need to customize and organize your boat to your unique fishing style. Is your boat ready? Visit BoatOutfitters.com. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Join us as the crew at MCU installs an auto leveling set of trim tabs on Brian's 30 foot Grady White project. If you guys recall, about a year ago, I purchased a 30 foot Grady White Bimini from a good client of mine. The boat was old, it was sitting behind the house, it wasn't used much. It had the original two stroke engines, had some old electronics. These are really nice boats and they're really expensive. I was hoping to do a quick flip Maybe do a quick repower and just send the thing down the road with a nice detail. But I started taking the boat apart. I was looking at the new ones. I was noticing that they paint the T-tops. They do a couple things. The boats are really similar to each other, even 10 years later. So I figured if I could get this older boat looking like the new one, kind of bring it up to date, I could probably get a lot more money for it. So I decided to rip the thing apart, paint the T-top, paint the chair, paint the hull, Put new 300 Yamahas on the back. I'm actually gonna paint those motors as well to match everything. The boat's gonna come out awesome. So I'm actually gonna invest a little more money into this thing and update it with some of the coolest, latest and greatest electronic equipment. One of the things I'm really looking forward to are these new Auto Trim Pro trim tabs that Bennett Marines brought out. These things are incredible. This is what a high-end client looks for in his boat, something that not everyone else has. Also, the ability to help him operate the boat. They're really neat. I can't wait to see him and test him out on his 30 Bimini. Uh, Brian just came up to me with a uh, new set of trim tabs for his Grady project boat that he uh, wants to get flipped. But uh, Brian is wanting to upgrade the old Bennett system that's in this boat with the, this new Bennett system, which is new on the market. I can't wait to get these things put in because they got some pretty cool features. Once you get these tabs programmed and set up for that vessel, you know, you can have a bunch of people run to one side of the boat and this sucker is going to automatically level the boat out. You know, that's a good thing. It keeps the pilot with its eyes where they should be in front of them, not pushing a bunch of buttons. 
This boat was actually, when it came off, the, when it went down the assembly line, it was actually designed and built for Bennett tabs. All my screw holes lined up perfect. So I'm gonna re-bed them with 5200, run the new screws in, and uh, move on to installing the actuators. Well, the actuators are, if you just look at them real quick, they, they're identical to the old ones. The only difference is these got a, a green wire on one actuator and it's got a red wire on the other. And uh, that's just to tell you which side's port and which side's starboard because that's what's going to light up your in indicating pad. All I had to do was just blow a small quarter inch hole uh, in between two of my existing screw holes and uh, that's where the wire is going to run through and, you know, bed it in with 5200, mount the tab, make sure my wire is pulled through straight. I've drilled a big enough hole so that they went through perfect. Now that we got the tabs and actuators on this boat, uh, we're not ready to move on any further because Brian's got to figure out how he wants the layout on the dash. And that's going to determine where I am going to put my uh, control pad for the trim tabs. I've got to wait for Brian to figure that part out and uh, hopefully that will be soon because I want to see how these new tabs work out on this boat. One of the things with this big 30 foot Grady White is when you go to plane, the bow comes up in the air and you almost can't see anything. One of the cool features to these trim tabs is the ability for them to sense when the throttles are put down, the boat starts to accelerate, the tabs drop down and help keep the bow down as much as possible. I think that's gonna be a real key feature on a boat this size. And one of the really cool features about these trim tabs are that when you get your boat set up and it's rigged out just right, and you've got your fuel burn figured out for your load and everything's calculated and you've got the boat running just where you want it, now you don't have to remember where the trim tabs are set up. You'll be able to lock in a favorite position and these tabs will go to it every time you press that favorite button. That's a really neat feature for people on those big long trips that are running triple, quad outboards. I mean, fuel burn on those things are ridiculous. Knowing that the trim tabs are set to the exact spot that gets you the fuel burn, that's worth saving some money on. And how about when you go out on the boat and you've got those obnoxious friends that just love to run from side to side and move all around the place? You know, typically the ones that have never been on a boat before. It just gets annoying reaching down, pressing the buttons all the time to adjust the boat where you want it. Now you don't have to worry about that. These trim tabs take care of that all on their own and give you the ability to also still operate the trim tabs just like a regular plane set. You could lock out all these automatic features and simply just run the trim tabs up and down with your fingers, just like you always have for the last 30 years. The more research I do about these tabs, I'm realizing how lucky the new owner of this boat's gonna be when they get to experience all these cool features that Bennett implemented into the trim tab system of this boat. Next week on Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat, Brian at MCU rushes to complete a surprise project for his family, going over the top with custom modifications on a 12-foot Boston Whaler and Florida sportsman boating editor George Labonte meets with the owner of a 25-foot contender who customized the boat for targeting pelagics offshore of Miami. The filming of Florida sportsman Project Dreamboat has been shot on location at Marine Customs Unlimited. You dream it, we build it.